Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kun Li, and I'm from the Illinois Institute of Technology. I'm very glad to come here to the Wolfram Technology Conference and present my study, co-authored with my advisor, Dr. Ben Vavlid. And today our topic is, how does high-frequency treating affect low-frequency treating? And I believe some of you have already heard of high-frequency treating. But unfortunately, until now, the, de uh, the definition of high-frequency treating is still ambiguous. According to a 2010 report issued by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the U.S. SEC, they listed a couple of characteristics related to the high-frequency treating. For example, they characterized the high-frequency treating as a treat with the use of high-speed and sophisticated computer programs. And usually, they treat, they can establish and liquidate the positions in a very short time period. And by the end of the trading days, they won't carry their positions overnight. None of the existing study from academia considered how, to, how the HFT affects their counterparties that is, the low frequency treating. And our study tried to fill this gap. And we tried to examine whether or not the HFT benefits LFT in terms of two dimensions. One is the liquidity, and the other one is the execution quality of the low frequency treating. And as a further step, we examine the HFT's intermediary effect on, H on LFT. We assume that the HFT stands in as a middleman between the traditional market makers, who was usually in low frequency, and the low frequency traders. And they try to take the liquidity in the ones from the market makers and then transport to the low frequency traders who demand this liquidity. And at the beginning, we want to introduce the measures we use to evaluate the liquidity. First, we have the treat frequency. It represents the number of transaction messages in one minute. And second, we have the average size. It represents the average treat quantity of uh, per order among the orders in the same minute. And we also include the transaction cost related measures, including the effective half spread. It is uh, it is the difference between the traded price and the midpoint of the, quote, of the quoted bid ask, uh, bid ask prices. And this effective half spread can be decomposed into two components. One is called the realized half spread. It, is, it represents the transaction cost components due to the monopoly power. And in our study, this monopoly power comes from the market makers. And the other component is called the price impact due to the adverse selection. And in our study, this adverse selection comes from the high frequency traders. And in terms of the execution quality side, we have three measures. The first is the average waiting time. And the waiting time is the time between the submission of a limit order and the finalization of the same order. And we also have two ratios, which represents the likelihoods of execution. The first one is a frequency ratio. It is the number of executed transaction messages over the total transaction messages added in the same minute. And likewise, the quantity ratio of execution is the quantity executed in one minute over the total, quanti uh, the total quantity um, added in the same minute. OK, next I want to talk about the data we use. We used a very unique data set, including the Dow Jones Industrial Average 30 stocks. And <clears throat> it covers 134 trading days during November 2010 and May 2011. 
our data is microsecond timestamp. Therefore, we can observe each one of the individual transaction messages in our data set. And as the initial data, process, uh, data processing, we categorize our transaction messages into three types of orders. And from the numbers here, you can see our study is a pure big data analysis study. After the data processing, we have 440 million high frequency trading limit orders in our data and 107 million low frequency trading limit orders in our data. And finally, we have 54 million low frequency trading market orders. And after categorizing them into three types, we group the order messages for each type by minute. So we have 134 trading days, and for each trading day, we have six hours and a half as a trading period. So as a total, we have 30, 390 minutes for one single day. And then, I want to move to, the, uh, to our analysis. In order to explore the impact of HFT on the low frequency, we include the different dimensions of HFT and different dimensions of HFT activity in our independent variable group. So for the HFT side, we have the trade frequency of HFT calculated by the HFT limit orders the 440 limit orders, and we have the average quantity uh, calculated by the HFT limit orders, and we have the two transaction, mass, uh, transaction cost components, the realized spread and the price impact from the HFT side. And we also include three necessary LFT-related measures in our independent variable group. We have the effective half spread from the, market order, from the low frequency market order side and the two transaction components from the LFT limit order side. And in order to take a deep look at the LFT activity, we have a total of seven dependent variables in our regression. And after categorizing them by the order type, on the LFT limit order side, we have the frequency, the trade frequency, and the average trade quantity as the dependent variable regarding the liquidity of LFT limit orders. We have the average waiting time, frequency ratio, quantity ratio from the LFT limit order side regarding the execution quality of the LFT limit orders. And on the LFT market order side, we include the trade frequency and average trade quantity as a dependent variable, which can capture the liquidity of LFT, LFT market orders. So now let's move to the result. So since we have dimensions of HFT-related measures in our independent variable group, we pick up the trade frequency of HFT as the representative to show you how it affects the LFT activity across the different dimensions. And at first, we can see if the trade frequency of HFT increases, it can help increase the trade frequency of LFT orders across the both type. The both the frequency of limit order and the frequency of the market order increases as well. And the same and the similar positive relationship appears as well on the size of the LFT orders in both types. When the trade frequency of HFT goes up, it helps increase the size of LFT limit orders and market orders both. And in terms of the execution quality of the LFT limit orders, when the trade frequency of HFT in the market increases, it helps reduce the waiting time of the low frequency limit orders. 
and, it's, and it also help increase the likelihood of execution for the LFT limit orders, shown by the frequency ratio and the quantity ratio. And for the other independent variables from the HFT side, they gave me the same kind relationship like the frequency, like the treat frequency of HFT gave us here. So in our initial analysis, we have confirmed that HFT facilitates the liquidity and execution quality of LFT. So as a second step, we try to take a deep look by discovering the position, the real position and function of the HFT in the market. So we move to the intermediary effect of HFT. And here we take the LFT limit orders as, the, as an example. And we know in the old time, when there were no HFT uh, high frequency traders in the market, there were only market makers who used to be the liquidity provider to the low frequency traders. And in our analysis, we use the realized spread calculated from the limit orders to capture the direct cost to LFT due to the market makers. And after, and after the high, frequen high frequency trader came out, we use the adverse selection, the price impact calculated from the low frequency trading limit order to evaluate the direct cost to LFT due to HFT. And we hypothesize that the HFT stand in the middle between the market makers and low frequency traders. And they take the liquidity in advance from the market makers and then transport to the low frequency traders when they demand for the liquidity. So from the high frequency trader standpoint, they have, they have a direct transaction cost due to market makers represented by the realized spread calculated from the high frequency traders limit order data. And for the remaining component, transaction cost component, the price impact, it evaluates the direct cost to HFT due to the competition against the market makers displayed uh, represented by the dash, uh, dashed arrow in our figure. So if this transaction cost component gets bigger and bigger, it implies that it is more probable for the HFT to beat market makers down and take their place and become the liquidity provider to the LFTs. And here is our result. So at first, if we take a look at the bottom two variables, and we can see across all the five dependent variables related to the LFT limit orders, from the standpoint of LFT, the cost due to HFT, which is the bottom one, always has a larger coefficient than the cost due to market makers, which is the one <coughs> above it. So it implies that the HFT affects LFT with larger impact than the traditional market maker because the price impact is the direct cost due to HFT and the realized spread is the transaction cost due to market makers. So that means from the LFT standpoint, they are more sensitive to the cost due to HFT than the cost due to, L uh, due to market makers. And if we take a look at the upper two variables, from the HFT standpoint, we can see that at first, both, both the cost component help increase the treat frequency and the two likelihoods of execution, and then reduce the waiting time. 
So once again, from the second analysis, it also confirms that HFT is benefiting the LFT's liquidity and execution quality rather than hurt them. And if we compare these two, coefficient, uh, these two variables coefficients across all the five regressions, we will notice that the cost due to HFT, uh, the cost to HFT due to the competition, which is the price impact of HFT, has larger coefficients than the cost due to market makers to HFT. So it implies that it is more probable that HFT takes place, takes, place, uh, takes place of the market makers and provide liquidity to the LFT. And HFT has become the primary liquidity provider to, <coughs> to the LFT instead of the market makers. Okay, in conclusion, from our study, at first, we have, found, uh, we have found that the more HFT activity can really benefit the LFT. They can bring more frequency and larger size of orders, a higher likelihood of execution, and reduce the waiting time. And second, we also find that the HFT plays as an intermediary in the market and help the liquidity transportation to LFT. The HFT improves the liquidity and execution quality, and moreover, the HFT's intermediary effect has become dominant compared with the traditional market makers in low frequency. Okay, thank you. <laughs>